Now speaking, John Mills, Head of Investor Relations, Harold Edwards, President and Chief Executive Officer of Liminera, reported that the company's second quarter fiscal year 2023 earnings were strong. Net income increased by 15% to $2.3 million compared to the same period last year, while adjusted EBITDA increased by 3% year-over-year to $10.6 million. Revenues also increased 8% to $50.1 million. The company's success was driven by increased sales from their fresh lemon and avocado divisions as well as a continued focus on cost reduction initiatives. Management noted that they are confident in their ability to continue to grow profits and remain profitable for the remainder of the year. They also announced plans to increase investments in their avocado business and expand their California citrus acreage. Now speaking, Harold Edwards, President and Chief Executive Officer. I am pleased to report that Liminera has made significant progress in their strategic asset lighter transition plan in the first half of fiscal year 2023. They have sold four of the six identified assets for a total of $130 million and anticipate selling the remaining $50 million of assets within the next 12 months. In January of 2023, they sold their northern properties for $98.4 million, which was used to pay down much of the company's domestic debt. As part of this transaction, they entered into Farm Management Services Agreement to provide farming services related to the property and a grower packing and marketing agreement to provide packing, marketing, and selling services for lemons harvested on the property. This fits with their strategic plan to expand their one world of citrus leveraging their leading global packing, marketing, and selling services using more grower partner fruit. They are also looking to monetize their water assets by either following acreage, leasing pumping rights, or selling the water rights. Additionally, they reached a settlement agreement with Southern California Edison Company and Edison International in April of 2023, receiving a total settlement of $9 million, and they disposed of the related property, plant, and equipment at the Cadiz Ranch in April recording a non-cash loss on disposal of assets of $9 million. In May of 2023, they entered into an exclusive licensing relationship with APL Sciences. Their technology will protect Liminera's lemons across the supply chain by maintaining moisture for longer and reducing oxidation, preventing spoilage throughout the supply chain. And finally, they are reconfiguring their global lemon packing network to reduce certain orange and lemon acreage globally while still maintaining the packing and marketing of the lemons grown on these locations. This is all positioning them to improve their top and bottom line results in fiscal year 2024. Now speaking, Mark Palamountain, Chief Financial Officer. Second quarter of fiscal year 2023 net revenue was $48.1 million, compared to the same period in the previous fiscal year. Agribusiness revenue was $46.7 million, with fresh lemon sales totaling $26.6 million and avocados totaling $3.6 million. Other operations revenue was $1.4 million. Settlement proceeds from the Thomas Fire were $9 million, of which $3.8 million was allocated to lemons and $2.4 million was allocated to avocados. Total costs and expenses for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023 were $51.9 million, an increase of $7.8 million primarily due to a loss on disposal of assets related to the Cadiz Ranch. Operating loss for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023 was $3.9 million, compared to operating income of $2.6 million in the second quarter of fiscal year 2022. Net loss applicable to common stock after preferred dividends for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023 was $1.7 million, compared to net income applicable to common stock of $1.4 million in the same period last year. Adjusted net income for diluted earnings per share for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023 was $3.9 million, compared to $1.9 million in the same period of fiscal year 2022. At the beginning of the fiscal year, the company sold its northern properties for total net proceeds of $98.4 million, used to pay down all domestic debt except the Ag West Farm Credit $40 million non-revolving line of credit. Long-term debt as of April 30, 2023 was $40.8 million, resulting in a net debt position of $31.5 million at quarter end. The company has $50 million of remaining non-strategic assets available for monetization over the next 12 months. Lemon pricing for the first half of fiscal year 2023 has remained challenging, but there is beginning to be a small recovery in price in the second half of the year. The avocado market is currently oversupplied with fruit coming in from Mexico and Peru, which will continue to pressure prices for the fiscal year. Orange revenues for the second quarter of fiscal year 2023 were $1.4 million, compared to $2.6 million in the same period of fiscal year 2022. Specialty citrus and other revenue was $2.4 million, compared to $1.4 million in the same period of fiscal year 2022. Now speaking, Harold Edwards, President and Chief Executive Officer. 
Luminera expects total lemon sales volume for fiscal year 2023 to be between 5 to 5.4 million cartons, up from 4.9 million in fiscal year 2022. Despite pricing pressure, lower industry production should lead to slightly higher prices. Due to weather factors impacting orchards, the company now expects avocado volumes for fiscal year 2023 to be 3 to 4 million pounds, down from a previous range of 4 to 5 million pounds. This is due to California crop alternating high and low production levels. Liminera also expects to receive $115 million from harvest at Liminera over seven years, with $8 million already received in the fourth quarter of fiscal year 2022. This breakdown is expected to be $8 million in fiscal year 2022, $5 million in fiscal year 2023, $8 million in fiscal year 2024, $17 million in fiscal year 2025, $25 million in fiscal year 2026, $30 million in fiscal year 2027, and $22 million in fiscal year 2028. The company has identified $180 million of non-strategic assets for sale and has already sold $130 million in the past nine months, expecting to announce the sale of the remaining $50 million in the next 12 months. Stevens Incorporated analyst Ben Bienvenu inquired, what is your view on the lemon markets and what is the path to more normalized earnings for this segment of your business? Harold Edwards replied, thank you for the question, Ben. We've taken steps to improve our lemon operations by focusing on cost reduction and optimizing production in the most profitable areas. In Yuma, Arizona, we took advantage of following programs with the Bureau of Reclamation which eliminated our profitability problem. In San Joaquin Valley, we pivoted to become a packer, marketer and seller of lemons. In Ventura County, logistical costs are lower due to proximity to our packing house. Finally, we have stopped farming operations in Cadiz, eliminating 250,000 cartons of supply which will be offset with production from grower partners. These changes should lead to dramatic improvements in profit contributions from our lemon business, even in a low-price environment, and we remain confident that higher prices will come eventually. Stevens Incorporated analyst Ben Bienvenu inquired, what is your assessment of the supply and demand dynamics of avocados, given the increase in volumes and decrease in prices? Harold Edwards replied, supply has been the main driver behind our market this year. Mexico had a very large crop compared to last year, which caused disruption in the supply chain and temporarily drove up prices. The high pricing environment turned off consumers, so while producers saw more profitability, it was unsustainable. We're now back to normal pricing with better value for customers, but demand is still lagging as people were turned off by the high prices previously. I'm confident things will catch up, but right now we've seen a decrease in demand year on year. Stevens Incorporated analyst Ben Bienvenu inquired, could you provide more detail on the market appetite for outright purchases or strategic arrangements to monetize your water rights, and what is your desire to engage with that? Harold Edwards replied, the following program we have in place will generate an estimated $1.4 million in additional revenue and is expected to end by 2026. The federal government plans to reduce consumptive use of water on the Colorado River by a third, likely resulting in a 25-year agreement for all acreage at significantly higher values than our current rate of $400 per acre foot. We are also partnering with a New York hedge fund to explore opportunities to acquire acreage at out-of-value prices. We are carefully assessing all options to ensure the best decision for our shareholders. Mark Palamountain replied, Ben, cities such as Buckeye have been taking proactive measures to secure water rights. In the desert, we saw that Buckeye paid an impressive $13,500 for one acre foot of water. With the three-year period soon coming to an end, we anticipate seeing more industries and cities approach us for their water needs. The Riley financial analyst Raj Sharma inquired, Can you provide an update on the five-year asset light plan and expected levels of production for this year and next? What is the outlook for sourcing third-party cartons? Harold Edwards replied, We have the capacity to pack up to 7 million cartons of lemons annually at our Santa Paula facility. Additionally, we have storage and washing capabilities in Oxnard. We anticipate that supply from District 3, the desert, will decrease due to water pressure from the Colorado River, while supplies from the San Joaquin Valley are expected to increase due to increased outside growers and expansion of lemon production there. To meet our internal goal of 15 million cartons over the next three to five years, we plan to pursue additional packing options in the valley, while managing growth at 20% per annum. B. Riley Financial Analyst Raj Sharma inquired, what was the volume growth in packing and shipping of third-party services over the last year? Harold Edwards replied, most of our growth this year will come from our third-party grower partner Fruit. We also have some younger acreage coming online, but it won't be as significant a contributor to our overall growth. B. Riley Financial Analyst Raj Sharma inquired, is the expected financial impact of this event expected to be spread evenly across the next five years, or is it more of a one-time occurrence? 
Mark Palamountin replied, I believe it's fair to say that our goal is a 20% volume growth rate per year. This number takes into account expansion and contraction due to water in District 3, allowing us to balance the overall growth. The Riley Financial Analyst Raj Sharma inquired, can you elaborate on the potential impacts of a 25-year water rights requirement, including the potential increase in annual cost and acreage? Harold Edwards replied, right, so, we have 613 acres that we followed and our three-year program has allowed us to get 5.6 acre feet per acre with a $400 value per acre foot. We hope to follow the remaining 1,300 acres. This could potentially bring values of up to $1,000 per acre foot for the total 2,913 acres. Harold Edwards replied, yes, we are poised to take advantage of an opportunity should it arise. We remain committed to our long-term strategy and are prepared to seize any potential opportunities as they come. The Riley Financial Analyst Raj Sharma inquired, can you explain the $9 million increase in operating costs associated with Cadiz, and is it a non-cash expense? Mark Palamountin replied, yes, that answered my question. To sum it up, we invested $9 million in 640 acres of land, which included a pink lemon experiment that didn't go well. Over the course of the past three years, this investment resulted in an operating loss of up to $1.5 million and an additional $1.3 million in development costs. In order to prevent further losses, we decided to take a $3 million cash out from this asset. We expect to see a dramatic shift in our fourth and first quarters due to this decision. B. Riley Financial Analyst Raj Sharma inquired, what is the impact of the $1.3 million development and $1.5 million operating loss reversal and $49 million non-cash loss on your financial performance? Mark Palamountin replied, we decided to offset the upcoming tax payment in June with our gains, which made a lot of sense. The asset is located in a remote area, and transport costs have been an issue, costing us approximately $10 per carton. We believe this decision will be positively received and make a big difference for us. Lake Street Capital Markets Analyst Ben Cleave inquired, Harold, can you explain the degree of exclusivity in the relationship between Liminera and APL? Harold Edwards replied, in response to your question, Ben, we have been following APL's progress closely since they first started. We believe in their science and efficacy, so when the founder and CEO offered us the opportunity to be their one-stop shop lemon partner, we accepted. Our plan is to establish relationships with major retail and food service customers in the United States and eventually globally, providing them with our own supply of APL-coated lemons. To meet the demand of large accounts such as Walmart, we need to set up an arrangement with strategic partners to provide additional supply. We'll maintain an exclusive relationship with the customers while supplying them with a combination of our own and partner source lemons. Lake Street Capital Markets Analyst Ben Cleave inquired, can you discuss how your retail customers are responding to the recent news regarding APL science and shelf life benefits? Are they eager to engage with you or will this take some time to show on the income statement? Harold Edwards replied, it will take some time to implement the new coding, but it holds potential for many applications that can benefit our customers in the supply chain. It could allow us to ship in ambient temperatures and explore different channels of supply with less reliance on refrigeration. Over 40% of a lemon's post-harvest life is typically spent in warm environments, so this coding could help ensure a better experience for customers and consumers alike. We plan to communicate our successes as we achieve them, rather than overhype our progress in advance. Lake Street Capital Markets Analyst Ben Cleave inquired, what successes are you expecting to see from the initiatives discussed earlier in the call? Roth Capital Partners Analyst Jerry Sweeney inquired, when can we expect to get a better look at the investments plan for the new Luminera 2.0 strategy? Mark Palamountin replied, in response to Jerry's question, we've been working closely with the board since April to craft a roadmap for our asset lighter model. We're not rushing to invest the capital we just acquired, but instead focusing on creating cash and reducing debt. As our earnings improve from the work we're doing, we will be able to articulate more plans for deploying that capital creatively and efficiently. Harold Edwards replied, Jerry, our first foray into packing, marketing, and selling services to grower partners has been a success that exceeds expectations in terms of profitability. We're now looking to build on this success by creating a new division for the company dedicated to farm management services. We were recently given the opportunity to work with Prudential in this capacity, and we're focused on delivering best-in-class service to hold on to that contract and expand this part of the business. This could drive significant value for the company without needing to deploy a lot of capital. We'll be providing more updates as we move forward while being mindful of our capital usage. Roth Capital Partners Analyst Jerry Sweeney inquired, is the plan you are developing to address long-term growth expected to be finalized in the coming month or two, with details released later this year? Roth Capital Partners Analyst Jerry Sweeney inquired, what changes have occurred in the Chinese lemon market since the lockdown 3.5 months ago, and is there an opportunity to capitalize on those changes? 
Harold Edwards replied, Thank goodness for China, as without it the oversupply situation would be even worse due to foreign exchange. The strength of the dollar and weaker currencies have pushed up the cost of lemons in export markets, like Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, and China. This has opened the door for customers to explore alternative, cheaper sources of supply, like Egypt, Turkey, and South Africa. As a result, there is now global parity in pricing with much more competition, which has led to a challenging landscape compared to pre-pandemic when prices traded at a premium. Roth Capital Partners analyst Jerry Sweeney inquired, what is the process of selecting and valuing different classes of water rights, given their seniority levels? Harold Edwards replied, the Colorado River is subject to a treaty and accord that was established in 1900 and 1905, which sets out class levels 1 through 8 and will expire in 2026. Now, the federal government is using the Bureau of Reclamation to pressure the seven states that use water from the river to reduce their total consumptive use by a third. This has created a dynamic where junior water rights holders are being cut first, then senior holders who have the right to keep or sell their water rights. Farmers with senior water rights are unwilling to sell, whereas permanent crop producers see more value in selling to urban users. At the end of the day, there will be a third less consumption of the river and all the housing from the Central Arizona project will be funded by the federal government. Harold Edwards replied, I appreciate the questions and interest in Liminera. Our quarterly earnings demonstrate our commitment to providing value for our shareholders. The figures reflect a positive quarter and we are confident that this trend will continue. Thank you again for your support.